Welcome to Picture Language Seminar. We're very pleased today to have T.C. Wei. He's visiting us from Stony Brook, and he is going to tell us about the fact that learning marginal suffices. This will be about complexity of quantum states. We're looking forward very much to your talk. Thank you very much, Arthur. Yeah, it's a great pleasure to be here. And thanks, Arthur, for inviting me here. Um, the whole group. And the, the whole group. <laughs> and yeah, I feel like I, I have some kind of jet lag feeling because I drove here late last night. <laughs> and only have, uh, yeah, not enough regular hours of sleep <laughs> because of the traffic on the road. But yeah. Um, yeah, so I'm going to tell you about a work that I uh, have done with. Uh, Neng Kun Yu, also from Stony Brook University. In fact, Neng Kun uh, led the project and I was learning with him on, on these wonderful things about quantum modular. So, so our paper is in the archive and going to the screen here. So it's about learning marginal. So when, when, we, serve, um, when we say learning marginal surfaces, meaning that uh, there are some states, uh, the global state you can learn by just learning the marginal instead of doing the full tomography. And so that's the title he, uh, Neng Kuen came up with. So sort of my subtitle for that is uh, Sample Complexity of Learning a Quantum State. And then we also related to uh, circuit complexity of creating a quantum state. So yeah, so the motivation is that uh, if you're given a quantum state, how do you, uh, and you have given many, because if you're only given one copy, there's not much information you can get. If you're given multiple copy of the same state, how how do we learn the state, right? So the naive way is to do quantum state tomography, uh, show there uh, the picture is one qubit, you only need to know it, expectation of the three poly matrices, then you can reconstruct the state. And now you go to two qubits. Um, then you have to do coincidence uh, measurement. This is a photonic setup um, and an experiment that was actually involved in Paul Quill's group. So you see the density matrix there and expanded in terms of um, product of two poly matrices and you sum over all possibility. If you know the expectation value of these uh, matrices, then you can determine the state. So this is uh, quantum states tomography. Uh, essentially, you need to measure poly product. You need to know all the expectation value because you can in general expand uh, in terms of product poly. Uh, so this is what you need to learn. But then you think of how many uh, operator you have to learn, uh, measure, this is going to be exponential. Right? So in general, there are, for n qubit, there are three to the n operator that you have to learn. Um, but if we could do this, then we could also use uh, quantum state tomography to prove a process. This is what people call uh, quantum process tomography, because you can you can send different uh, input and then you measure the output uh, performing the tomography, state tomography, and then you can sort of infer what the black box is doing on the state. Okay, so yeah, as I said, there is an exponential barrier to learn because uh, naively we have to measure uh, three to the N operators. And uh, to do that, you will take exponential many observable and then you also need to know how many copies are needed. So I just show uh, um, another work that we have done actually is an experiment, cloud experiment on uh, IBM quantum computer. We have created uh, XXZ approximate ground state for 102 qubit, uh, but we didn't do these uh, three to the 102 different kind of measurement because our goal is to measure energy. So only uh, two body terms are needed. So we didn't do that. If we had to do that, then it would be impossible for us to carry out this. So in order to 
It's not to overcome the external barrier, it's actually to compromise in order to make progress. So we compromise and, and there are a, a, a few proposals in the past, I can only list a, a few here. For example, people uh, propose using compressed sensing, uh, designed for low range states. Uh, this is work by uh, growth companies. And that reduced the complexity slightly, right? Um, and there's also other proposal examples from Kramer and Collaborator. They sort of inspired by the matrix product state and the way you can think of a state is being returned or and then use SVD. And then so they design some unitary circuit to disentangle the state and then you measure the state, you know the unitary and and you do this sequentially. So it's inspired by matrix product states. So, so but um, if we want to compromise, we can also ask uh, the question that maybe we, we don't need to know all the global states, we just need to know certain properties of, of the system. So, the, and this idea has been taken up by uh, Few people, for example, color and wheelchair, they propose these corner overlapping tomography. The idea is not to learn the global state, but to learn, uh, for example, K body terms. So K local polys. So for example, what I showed there, you have uh, sigma X, sigma Y up to sigma Z and the rest of identity. And it could be any permutation. So the idea is to learn these K, what I K, what I call K local polys, local in the sense, not in the geometric local sense. Okay. So what they have found is that um, they are approximately n to the K number of reduced density matrices. It's not exponential because we only limit ourselves to to find a K. Uh, but then they kind of found that uh, the number of measurement or samples that you need to perform such uh, tomography uh, actually is, is improved, much improved from the naive thinking. So they say um, you need to have e to the roughly exponential number times n to the k copies that you needed. Yeah, it's for k finite is still doable. And so, yeah, the idea is you need to so if you measure the global, so instead of just measuring K body uh, terms, you 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 measure all the non-trivial uh, poly product, then tracing some of them, you still you still get some of the information of the low lower rank um, polys. So, but then the idea is how you choose uh, sort of some overlap patterns that I show there is. Uh, using some uh, hash functions. So the way is to cover as much as possible so that when you are looking at reduced uh, data, then you can actually figure out as many as a lo K local operators. Yep. So I don't think I can go through the detail, but just to give you the idea that um, using overlapping tomography, you can actually achieve uh, some improvement and I want to mention that Nanquin has a, a slightly different but similar uh, idea of doing uh, overlapping tomography and the number of samples is more specific. So in, in this paper, by color and wheel check is e to the of order k. So Nanquin sort of have a specific number. He's, he said that we need uh, 10 to the k, so it has specific uh, number there and log n. n is a number of different k reduced density metric you want to you want to measure. And lambda is just um, the accuracy to trace model. Okay, so so this is a specific one that I'm going to use. So this this will come up when I estimate the sample complexity. Okay. And another um Directions taken by uh, Juan and collaborators, they use the so-called classical shadow. The, uh, the goal is not to also know the global state, but to predict certain property. 
And these properties are a set of observable label by the O, o I, this set of M different observable. And so they want to really measure that accurately. So what they found is that uh, of order log M measurement can actually be sufficient to, to deduce the, the expectation value. Of course, there are also other factors, but uh, it also is efficient. And there's a, this shadow known, so I, I won't say too much, but this uh, this n is greater than of order log m times so the maximum of the shadow known square. And this shadow known roughly is uh, for the k local operator is uh, upper bounded by four to the k. So there's still some explanation number of k that, that's needed. Okay, but the, the upshot is log n. So if you only need to predict n numbers, then log n is sufficient up to these k dependence factors. And we assume we are not trying to uh, deal with k that is proportional to, to the number of, of qubit of psi. So in these uh, restricted observable or a set of operator you want to measure, then um, you have improvement that you can make, the progress you can make along this, this line. Okay. And so I want to say that knowing the density matrix is really useful. And you could also get some intuition. Uh, for example, um, there are um, a problem that has been uh, formulated in, in chemistry. It's called N representability problems. What um, the problem is about is that given a set of quantum marginal, by marginal, I mean reduced density matrix, if you are given a set of them, is there a global quantum state that actually is compatible with that? And this is turned out to be a hard problem. Uh, it's hard for fermions, spins, and even bosons. Uh, it's hard. Um, but if you could solve this problem, you could solve generically all the ground state energy problem. The idea is quite simple to know this uh, because uh, our Hamiltonian is it, written in some of these uh, local terms, this H S sub I, S sub I, I denote that as a set of sides or spins. Uh, for example, uh, for the SXD model, it would be nearest neighbor times, so it's two body. Uh, so to minimize the energy, it's only regarding the local terms. So only the local local marginal matters, like these rho sub SI matters, because these each SI is a local term. So if you minimize this, it's a linear minimization uh, function. If you can minimize this, but with the constraint that this rho i, rho sub i, really coming from a real quantum state, not anything that you, you write down arbitrarily, or you cannot just minimize each term. You could minimize each term with, with, with rho sub si, but then these may not be compatible. So that's the, that's the difficult part. But if you could solve this end reversibility problems, meaning that I know this, uh, I can optimize over the set of row, which coming from a global state, then you can actually solve the ground state problem. But this turns out to be uh, MP, more than MP hard, it's actually quantum version of MP complete problem. Uh, yeah. Uh, but I also want to mention, um, knowing these numbers uh, of these observable, the, uh, for example, the OI that I mentioned earlier, it could be, in this case, could be uh, expectation of sigma x and sigma x, or sigma z times sigma z. Uh, this is a picture from Australia and Sierra. Uh, it was later also called this, this kind of uh, expectation value. The range of them is called numerical range. These numerical range of few body operators also give us some insight of many body physics. For example, uh, you can look at this diagram. 
So this is uh, labeling the expectation value of xx, uh, cz, because we are dealing with a translation variance model here. So there are only two numbers that up could have, we could have a y axis. Indeed, people have done that. Uh, but you see, this is the set of separable state. There's no entanglement here. And this is the boundary of one dimensional SSC model. And this dash line is a two dimensional boundary. Somehow, its dimensionality goes up, and the boundary of these possible uh, numerical range of these observables somehow move along uh, in, in an interesting way. Yeah, but I don't have more intuition than this, but it, it provides you a, a, a pictorial way of looking at these many body system, just looking at a subset of these observables. Um, is it okay if I ask a question about this marginal problem yes. you have here? Yeah. Um, so uh, if, for example, if I had a, just like a three qubit system and you say um, that you want something to be compatible with marginals, are you looking at marginals for each like just a single qubit, or you're saying, oh, I'm also allowed to look at marginals for pairs of qubits, for example. So you can have like three, you know, with with three qubits in total, you have mar two, three different marginals on two subsystems, right? And three different marginals on uh, single particle sub subsystems. So what kind of marginals are you are you asking for here? Yeah, so thanks for the question. So usually uh, the kind of marginal we would like to know would be related to the Hamiltonian. So according to the interactions, uh, we call interaction graph. So for example, in this case would be the nearest neighbor uh, and then reduced density matrices. We call this, we will call it two local marginal. But in general, you can ask the question more generally, as you said, I can ask a subset of marginal. Like I could, if I have three qubit, I can ask about qubit one and two, qubit two and three, uh, one and three or ignoring one and three, et cetera. And then you can ask such questions. Yeah. Does that answer your question? Yes. So in particular, there exist situations where there is no solution, correct? Yeah. They, uh, if you are randomly given marginal, there usually is not, uh, there's no global state that says like that. If, you're, if your question is about uh, the amplifiability problem, so you cannot arbitrarily given marginal and say that this would come from a, a true wave function. Yeah. So in general, to determine this is actually a difficult problem. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Okay, so, so we're not so ambitious now, but um, these uh, methods, uh, somehow abandon the complete characterization uh, for quantum state, uh, but the goal is really practical to, to learn and predict some observable. Yeah. Uh, and here we're, we're trying to uh, learn the global state, but we are not so ambitious. We just want to ask, uh, uh, is there a subset of physically relevant states that we can learn well? Learn well in a sense, we want to know the global state, or at least being able to use that um, marginal, to sort of add, use it as a fingerprint saying, if I know these marginal look like that, then I know there is a global state that I can find construct in principle. Yeah, so that's a, a compromise from our point of view. We still want to learn the global state, but we want to find a subset of interesting cases. Yeah, so we can make some progress. So the answer is yes. So let me just say upfront, uh, the set of states that we're interested in are the set of unique ground states of local Hamiltonians with gap, finite gap, and also the output, st uh, output state of a short depth quantum circuit. So these are the two types of state that we're interested in. And in fact, they might be connection uh, between the two, as I'm going to show later. Yeah, so for this restricted state, we don't need to know all the endpoint correlators, but just some of the reduced density matrix. And for the Hamiltonian will be the marginal or reduced density matrix 
associated with the interaction, interaction graph. So that's why we call learning marginal surfaces. Yeah, that's this things. So for these restricted states, we can form the local marginal and then be able to infer the goal point state. Okay. So for example, I'll just give you an example circuit that we'll be considering. Um, so you see on the left, uh, this is nearest neighbor gate in 1D. So we we'll always consider two local gate. Uh, each gate uh, only act on two sides. So just on the left hand side, it shows that. One could point this here. So each is two local. It doesn't necessarily need to be this kind of structure, but any, it could be any two local gate um, as long as they don't overlap. And we will call the number of there to be the depth. So this will be the nearest neighbor gate in 1D. And this could be uh, an example of nearest neighbor gate in 2D here. And the last one is a non-local, non-local but two local gates that you could connect any of. There's no geometry uh, restricted. So this would be, these would be uh, different cases that we consider. Yeah, so, and we would like to learn output of these states. Okay, so um, regarding the Hamiltonians, I give you a few examples. So for example, the um, this AKLT state, uh, Affleck, D. Kennedy, Sasaki states. Um, this, for example, the 1D is a ground state of these two local Hamiltonian. Heisenberg like but has additional terms, but they only involving two, two sites. And we know unique ground states. So the question is how how hard to learn these. And also the two two-dimensional AKLT states. Uh, the first example one D is with a gap. So because with gap there is more restriction. So and make it easier if it's gapless and has a lot of then it's not easy to, to pinpoint. And this two dimensioned, uh, two dimensional one uh, on the particle lattice, uh, recently um, we and other, also other group proved that there is a finite gap. So these, these kind of Hamiltonian are of our interest. And another set is the, in another example is the Kitev Toriko Hamiltonian. Uh, on the torus, it has uh, full degenerate ground state, but if uh, severe, then it has unique ground state with a gap, and such Hamiltonian would also be of um, interest. Okay, so yeah, just to maybe uh, some short summary, we'll be interested in the minimum number of uh, copies of the same states that are necessary to reconstruct the whole, the global state. And so this we define as the learning complexity of, of a quantum state, at least in this talk. But of course it depends on the type of measurement you, you, you use. You could have, in principle, you could have really sophisticated uh, measurements. Suppose you want to learn a state psi, you could probably do a measurement which is projecting to psi or the complement. And if you always get psi, then you know it. But that kind of non-local measurement is not feasible, not practical. So in this talk, we're going to limit ourselves to just using the poly because this is the most natural one to use, uh, at least in this NISC area. And the second uh, is uh, we want to know the complexity. So the minimum number of quantum state necessary to, to implement such state. And as I showed earlier, we only use local gate, two local gates. Yeah, and we define this as the complexity of a quantum state. And this in this talk. Just just really brief summary of what we have. So we show that um, marginals uh, can uniquely determine quantum states with low circuit complexity. Low circuit complexity meaning that the number of layers is not so big. Yeah, and we also show the determination procedure is robust against 
potential noise of marginal. So your marginal doesn't need to be very precise. At least you just, there's some error that's allowed. And this would occur naturally in, in, in measurement, like in, in the real case, there would be statistical noise and maybe inaccuracy in your measurement axes, et cetera. And our result also, as I mentioned, we bridge the two cases, uh, complexity uh, and quantum states, the ground state of gap between it. So there are two, two different things that we connect, okay? So that, that's the <laughs> introduction. So we are now going to the meat of, of, of the results. So first I want to show you some very obvious property of unique ground states and their marginals. So before that, I want to define one notion that's called UDA. What, what it uh, means is, let me just read. So unique ground states, um, we're going to show uh, always uniquely determined by their local reduced density matrix among all mis mixed states. So, so let me define what UDA is. So we, we are concerned with pure state in this talk. So a pure state is UDA, so UDA, uniquely determined among all mixed states. Um, by marginal. So this is with respect to a set of site you you predetermined, you, you specify the set. Okay, maybe it's according to the Hamiltonian, it's two body turns. It could also be three body or four body, like in Torico. Um, if you given the set, the separation, like this could be a set SI are these, SJ are these, these usually would overlap. And we call these an interaction graph. So a state is UDA. If you find any any state, any mixed state, and then you look at them, uh, the the marginal of that mixed state, if it agree with the marginal of the pure state, and it implies that mixed state is actually the pure state itself. If if this state satisfies this property, then we call it UDA. Right, so that's a definition. So you can also restrict uh, the notion to be uh, UDP, uniquely determined by marginal among all pure states. You can also define this notion. Okay, so maybe this is also related to the question that asked uh, this example here. We don't really need um, explicit uh, construction, but just give you an example. For example, this kind of four qubit state, we call it W state, you only have one excitations. Um, this set of state is uniquely determined by all two body reduced density matrices. Essentially, there's only one excitation, so that's that's why it's not that difficult. So it's unique for qubits. Qubit. So it's not for qubits. Uh yeah, I don't know whether this, yeah. Have you studied this before? Yeah. So mostly, yeah, in this talk, we concern with qubit because we're thinking quantum circuit, but it would be interesting to, to look for beyond qubit, definitely. And the Hamiltonian, for example, the AKLT is not a qubit, it's, it's spin, spin one system and, and spin three half for the 2D. Yeah. So there's this example that uh, this set you can, uh, if you know all the two body terms, then it's unique to term. Uh, however, the GAD state. What's the difference between UDA and UDP? Uh, so UDA is that you, you check for all the mixed states. In general, it could be mixed state. And then if you look, if this state has the same marginal, then imply that this has to agree with the pure state. And UDP only check for the pure state. Yeah. Okay. So, for example, this GAG state, uh, four qubit GAG state, uh, is not UDA, it's not UDP, because there are state that have the same marginal. For example, you just take this 
for the mixture of the zero 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 and one 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 with uh, appropriate coefficient, that global state has the same marginal with the GMT state, but it's it's not the same. So yeah, and there are states that are UDP but not UDA. But UDA would imply UDP because you check for all mixed state, it doesn't exist a mixed state that agree. So therefore, you only need to check the fields. So UDA implies UDP, but UDP does not apply UDA. And there's construction in this paper. But uh, we don't need that explicit, uh, just the notion that uh, the definition of UDA. OK, I, yeah, I also learned this concept when I when I work on this with name for yeah. So there are states that there are a lot of fact that you found, oh, they were developed at the same time that you were doing something else, but you didn't know uh, some of these. And you relearn that. <laughs> okay, so these uh I, I show a summary of of what the property, yeah. So I showed a picture. So so the fourth thing that I'm going to discuss the property shown here. So a quantum state is UDA by its k-local reduced density matrix uh, on the interaction graph. Interaction graph, we mean the partition that they interact. So only if the tuple of the reduced density matrix, so like this, you have a partition S, S1 versus the rest and S2. So these representing the interaction. The spin interact among this set, among that set, et cetera, for example. Then you compute is reduced density matrix. So the picture I think I showed there. Maybe that you you consider this set and then trace over the rest. So that's what I mean by rows of SI. So the problem is if a state is UDA. Then this, uh, the tuples, the connection of these in this hyper, I don't know, high dimensional space, it will be an ex ex extreme point. But first, this set is a convex set. And because of UDA, that uh, tuple will be an extreme point. Because UDA, the notion of UDA is you cannot find a, a second one, right? So if you if it's not an extreme point, then you can always find a line and a two end point that this line on a line of two two points, and that's an UDA. So that's the, the idea. So so I draw here UDA imply the tuple is an extreme point. Okay. The second uh, quantum state is unique ground state of a Hamiltonian with a specified interaction graph. Uh, only if the tuple of the reduced energy is an exposed point. So this is also easy to know because we, we want a unique ground state, it's unique, right? And, and unique, so, and unique ground state of a Hamiltonian, but that means it's, it achieves energy in the lowest possible with respect to this Hamiltonian. So an exposed point is a extreme point uh, that achieve maximum, or in our case, minimum, or some linear function. In this case, it's Hamiltonian. So this this sort of quite natural. So, but it's it's phrased in terms of this language. So, unique ground state imply that the marginal, this tuple of marginal, is an exposed point in some higher dimensional space. Okay. So these are really natural, uh, but this frame in this way. So a quantum state, the third is quantum state is unique ground state of a Hamiltonian with uh, this interaction graph, only if it's UDA by its reduced dimension um, interaction graph. So there are two, two things. If your unique ground state is exposed point because it's achieved the lowest energy and it's all UDA because it's a unique ground state. So it has to be determined by the local. If a state, a different state have the same marginals, that means the energy is the same, but then that's imply that it's not a unique ground state. Right? 
So these are sort of simple facts, but somehow we sort of being able to picture it in terms of UVA connection to the ground states, extreme point, exposed point. Okay, so you can also ask, so this is unique ground state, we know it exposed point, UDA, uh, could any of these imply unique ground state? Like UDA, does it imply unique ground state? It turns out it's not. There's some count example found in this paper. So in order for it to be a unique ground state, it has to be an exposed point. So these tuple has to be exposed point, meaning that it would achieve uh, a maximum of some linear functional. And that linear functional is the Hamiltonian. So it's the parent Hamiltonian. That. So, so that's this last one. So yeah, if it's UDA and also exposed point, then it imply that it's a unique ground state for certain Hamiltonian. So I want to mention that um, extreme point does not necessarily need to be exposed because, for example, on this line here, so we also made mistake in our first draft there in, in the paper. Uh, so extreme point need not be exposed because uh, along this line, it achieves the same maximum. For example, you're considering, let's say, the coordinate X component and they achieve the same maximum, but this is not exposed because any point here has the same x coordinate. But this one is exposed. So along that direction is the maximum. Yeah. So this may take time to digest. Even for me, it took, took me some time to, to digest. But this is a helpful diagram to summarize that. So twofold of these, meaning that I I should say two, there shouldn't be a subscript. I, I mean these reduced set of reduced entry measures according to the interaction. Okay, so maybe it takes some time to digest. But if we need it, we can show this picture. Okay, so this would be a, a useful thing that we we know. So I want to say that um we have. The first result is that uh, the set of marginals, these can be provided as a useful fingerprint of a ground state. So this is according to this lemma, let me just show it here. So suppose psi is a unique ground state of some lake K local Hamiltonian with gap. Gap is very important here. And the interaction graph G here, so we show that if you're giving me uh, any state, could be mixed state, row, any of, uh, only one of these two can be satisfied. So I must one of them satisfy. So it's natural the state could be very close to this ground state, right? And okay, that's that's fine. But if it's not close, we will find that the marginal, the marginals uh, for that reduced uh, state for the mixed state. And with respect to the ground state, the marginal, there always exists one marginal that it's the difference is big. So this is in terms of one norm. So the difference is big, and how big? It's bigger uh, related to this uh, the gap, and the epsilon is the this one norm here, and over two m. M is the number of marginal we need. So at least they, so meaning that it's a fingerprint is maybe I have the same fingerprint looks very similar to yours, but if we compare, there is this one finger, one part of that that can distinguish. That's basically that's the idea. Okay. So this means that it's sufficient to perform tomography on all the k-local reduced density matrices, and with this precision. If we we can get very precise, smaller than this, and we know that they are they close, uh, then we we can use this as a fingerprint. Okay. So I'm going to show the proof of this. Yeah. It also takes me a while to digest. 
Uh, so uh, we're going to use this uh, this protocol that Ningguan came up later. But let me let me give you a proof of, of this. It's actually not difficult in combining a few things, but uh, I myself alone would not be able to come up with this. So this is with uh, collaboration with Ning Quinn. So let's just go through this. So first, uh, the Hamiltonian we know has a unique ground state with a gap. Delta, let me denote E0 as the, the ground state energy. So then I know the Hamiltonian is greater than the ground state projection times E0. And everything that's orthogonal to that must have energy at least E0 plus delta, right? That's obvious. Yeah. Um, you can write this way. And so if scenario one holds, then we have nothing to say. But if it doesn't hold, we wish we'd like to show that the scenario two must hold. Okay. Because this is a clear cut, there's no gray area. It's either one or two. So if scenario one does not hold, that means uh, this one known, the one known difference is greater than this given error, epsilon. And then you can show by use uh, the relation between one known and uh, two known or the overlap, then or the fidelity, if you call it fidelity. Uh, this is where we have the fact of two. Uh, things because uh, in Nielsen and Tron, they like to use trace distance and we use one norm. And actually, we also mixed that in our paper. So, but if uh, if this is greater than that, so if the one norm between the two states are bigger than uh, epsilon, then you can use this inequality here. In fact, uh, in particular, you use the right hand side of the the inequality on, on the bottom to relay that the fidelity between the state, the two states, is less than uh, some combination of this one norm. And you can you can easily show that this, if the one norm difference is big, that means their their fidelity is small. It's upper bounded by one minus epsilon squared. This really coming from from the from this inequality and uh, using the right hand side, you just you just expand uh, f f is this expression between the mid field state and the mixed state is smaller than one minus this term squared. So basically, that's what I'm using here, and if this Condition one does not hold, that means uh, the one on distance is bigger, and if subtract that, it's smaller. Okay, so it's really a uh, straightforward algebra. But this means that if we consider the energy difference, like you take, you take uh, this to really calculate the energy difference, right? You find that, uh, this is greater than using using this greater than this expression. So gap times one minus the overlap, and then by using this inequality, we found that uh, if you calculate this energy difference, you have a lower bound. So the intuition is not that hard. Is if it's Further away from the ground state, it must the energy must be big, bigger than some some number, and this is this is this is the lower bound. Yeah, but this means in, in terms of individual term, this trace s and the difference of row and psi marginal, some of these uh, is greater than that. That means there is at least a term. That's bigger than the average. Okay. So yeah, so we we have at least one that's greater than than this. 
right? at least one of the term is greater than the right hand side over the number of terms. So at least there's one term that's bigger than delta times epsilon squared over four m. Right? And using also uh, the restriction we, yeah. So I want to know that we restrict the Hamiltonian to be in this range. So each turn is from zero to identity. So we can always rescale so that this is in this range. So we can also use the, the one known dif, uh, definition that this is the maximum of all possible positive operator less than identity of the trace of between the two. So using that, you find that, so this, this here, this here, so at least one term using the definition of this. So this means that the one known this distance between the two marginal, at least one of them has to be bigger than certain number. So I, I hope, I mean, yeah, it's probably not easy to go real time and, and understand right, right on the spot. But, but how is the is lemma used in your, um, to prove your mean result? Yeah, we'll, we'll come to that. I don't know how much time we'll be able to. Um, but, but this is the only proof that I'm going to show. So the only proof that required. Okay, so so this is about, so what I'm saying is that this two states are either close or the marginal is big enough that you can tell the difference. Okay, okay so, yeah, so this we will connect uh, to the output of show that from circuit. So I show you the circuit layout in 1D nearest neighbor and then 2D and then uh, in arbitrary connections, right? So if you look at just from a single single operator, uh, it's like home. So after one depth that you connect two qubits, two sides, and then after another, so this is the, the second layer operation and then third layer, so it can grow like linearly outside, right? So that's, that's the, in, uh, maybe it's also re related to scrambling is its operator sort of grow and as a light cone. So, and this linear and this, in fact, the like locality become two times the number of them, okay? And in 2D, you can also try to grow this. Um, so each each instance, each layer we don't want, because uh, our definition, we cannot have gates that overlap, okay? And you can see if you want, I, I have a depth one that can connect the two, and then depth two, I try to grow, and depth three, I try to grow bigger and bigger. And you can see, convince yourself that this actually is bounded by D squared. The number of sides, the number of sides in this light cone is, is actually bounded by D squared. And there, we can define that precise function to be gamma two of D, but we don't have a closed form for that expression. Uh, in, in this, non-local gate, it's easy to see that it's grow exponentially because it's really just three. Um, one become two and two become four, four become eight, et cetera, okay? So this is how we're going to connect to the previous results. So I think we we have overcome the, the most difficult part. So, and but this part is easy because our initial state is zero. So we always start with zero state. And this is a unique ground state of very simple Hamiltonian with gap one, right? This, this Hamiltonian is the minus projector to zero and this with gap one, okay? And now it's pretty easy to, to, to see that if now I apply a depth D layer of circuit, this would grow, right? This is like growing this uh, one layer equal to uh, two local turn, Two layer go, it can grow to four local turn, right? Three layer go to more and more like that, right? So in this 1D and 2D grow faster. 
and uh, for non-local connection, they grow exponentially larger. Yeah. So you can easily see that now applying this uh, D-layer circuit, the original Hamiltonian become K-local, this K of D depending on the cases, right? And the gap still maintain. Right? It's a simple fact, the gap under unitary is still maintain. Okay. So basically that's the idea. And then you use the previous one with gap to be one. Then you can connect the output of of a D, uh, depth D circuit, right? And then you know the output of, of these circuits, uh, you take any states either close or you have a marginal that can tell the difference. Yeah. Uh, there is one subtlety is that it might be, uh, in this case I shown here, maybe one operator here could grow to uh, four operators like that and another operator grow to the same support. And we can sort of modify this Hamiltonian by just uh, collecting all the qubit, the size that propagate to the same support at the end. So, so this would actually shrink the number of terms because initially I have n terms, right? And I grow and, but some of the n terms, some of the terms may, may have the same support and I can just uh, combine them into one, one term. So actually that reduces the number of, of terms. Yeah, but that's just a uh, minor, minor detail, right? So this is then, this is the a theorem. So suppose you have an qubit state psi, which has cir uh, circuit complexity at most D, D layers. Any state, mixed state, one of the condition must hold. It's either close to the output of psi, of, of the circuit, which is psi, or there is a marginal that can tell the difference. Okay. So I use the this notation that psi without bracket is uh, specified its density matrix and with subscript meaning the, the margin. Okay. I've been using this, but I... So do you have any requirement on D that D must be less than equal to log when not function? We'll see, it depends on the on the circuit structure, yeah. Yeah, so I already uh, told you the intuition, and this is proven by the previous lemma that we have gone through. Yeah, so basically that's, okay. We just set the gap to be one, and the number of terms, n, can be smaller than n, but let's just set it to be n, okay. Okay, so, so, I think with that and is the rest is probably easier now, but this would related to your question. So, so this means that uh, using using one of the overlapping tomography by Nanquin uh, has specific ten to the k and log n. M is number of terms in the in the interaction or Hamiltonian. So in in the circuit case, it's always less than n, right? So if we don't know the circuit structures, we have to compute all possible k local terms, and it's k is choose chosen from all, all possible n. Right? So that's why we we set n equal to all possible choices, right? and then here you set you set this uh, trace known parameter to be the require, require one known difference here, right? You set that. If you can have accuracy being uh, better than that, then it suffices that we can learn the global state. But I didn't tell you exactly how to construct a global state. That's a, a different story and similar to the uh, overlapping tomography. But I'm using the results saying that it's it suffices to to learn these marginal, and using the previous result that with these marginal you can construct a global state with sufficient accuracy. Okay. So this is if we know the circuit structure, the number of terms is really just n at most n. So using this the result there, and this gamma is the one known one known that we use. Uh, to deduce previously. 
from, from the output of a circuit is either closed or there's a marginal which is bigger than this epsilon over 2n. Okay, so this related to your question, so right? So suppose we have, we are only given with polynomial a number of copies because it's, it's probably not like we have exponential number like copies. Uh, suppose we only have polynomial reasonable amount of copy, how long the depth we can probe the output. Yeah, using this result, uh, previous result, okay, I can just show you this. Because you just, uh, if it's 1D, then you can probe up to low end depth. Because uh, in order for 10 to the K to be polynomial, then the K will just be low. Okay. And you can also consider this two dimension is, is narrow as shallower. Yeah, we cannot probe to up to log D, we only probe square root of D. And for geometrically non-local, we can only probe even shorter. Yeah. I have a question, for example, yeah. for the circuit to output the cathode state. Cathode state, like yeah. Zero, zero, plus one, one. Yeah. Uh, then the depth should, have, like, you need at least, like, a, then... at the N over two. Like, yeah. yeah. In 1D, but if, if in 2D, there's different. I, I'm actually, that's one example that toward the end. Yeah. So, circuit complexity, uh, we define it to be the number of, of layers that it requires to construct. But I, I just maybe skip complexity, has been quite uh, important in, in different areas for computer science and. Recently, in this holography, ADS CFT, black hole, uh, I have very little knowledge about that. But uh, for example, people relate, relate the complexity to the volume and complexity actions. And this also has been studied in random quantum circuit. So uh, let me not, in, in the interest of time, let me not talk with that. But then uh, we can, uh, with this tool that we have, we can test the complexity of, of the state. At least in principle. So, so we want to check if we are only given polynomial number of copies of row, uh, can it be approximated by a, a short depth D circuit? So that is, we want to distinguish uh, the two cases. So this this row is the given state that you want to check. Uh, we want to distinguish if there is a some kind of state where circuit less than D that we construct so that they are close enough, closer in the sense of epsilon square of the six N uh, or, or it's big, yeah. So this is very similar to the, the previous case. Uh, so there's an algorithm. So let me just, in, uh, a way we formally check. So, but it may not be easy, but at least in principle. Is there a class if after this? No, but we're almost yeah. out of time. Yeah. So yeah, I would probably will we'll be done soon, but yeah. yeah. So, but maybe let me not go to too much detail, just saying that the idea is um, we can do overlapping demography uh, of, of this given state because we're given polynomial copies and we can do uh, this overlapping demography to obtain this marginal and to this precision. So idea if it's close, then uh, then uh, you can compute uh, a state psi if if it if it's condition one. That means this state exists. So then we can just write down a circuit, and then check. Uh, we can do variational algorithm, uh, variational circuit, and numerically calculate or run a quantum computer, and then measure its marginal, and so that uh, we want to see uh, whether this one known difference is small for all for all for all the marginal we can get, so we can check like it's like fingerprint we check out uh, all the different marginals. So and we we uh, we can see that uh, if case one holds, then this must be possible. We can we we always find a state side the marginal with the uh, overlapping results 
will always be small. Okay? But if we cannot find such a state doing all the variational, if such state doesn't exist, then this will be case two. Okay. Yeah, so I have more detailed proof, but uh, basically it, the proof is saying that uh, we know the case one would, would allow us to find a state psi that the marginal difference is small, but assume uh, in the case two, this the state is, the difference is big. Um, but assume we can find such a state and then we will lead to con contradiction. So meaning that we can always, so actually this is <laughs> the, the last part, yeah. So basically this uh, is uh, Kai Fong's question. So we show that uh, if psi is not UDA by its, its R local reduced density matrices, then its complexity is at least uh, the following, depending on the geometry. In 1D will be R plus one over two. Uh, 2D will be this, uh, the maximum D such that this gamma two is less than one more of this number R. So let me just show you the GZ state. Yeah, so the proof is really simple. So yeah, related to the UDA, but let me just say the result and example. So for a GSG state, you look at its uh, reduced density matrices of N minus one, it's not UDA, right? So this R is then N minus one. So according to our result, N minus one over two is the lower bound of circuit complexity in 1D, right? So that means you need to have at least n over two gates uh, depth. Yeah, but what you could do is like you start with this and then you go this side, control, control now, control now, control now on the right hand, right hand side, also left hand side. Yeah. So this match the exact construction and that's a lower bound. So they match. Yeah. So I guess, uh, yeah, I don't have any more thing just to mention. We could try to apply to Intrinsic topological states, so I mentioned the GSZ, but Keith had Corey called as a way to disentangle them, cross screening them. Uh, unfortunately, we couldn't find any useful thing because the number is not so good. Um, but then the symmetry protected topological state, it's a short range entangled state, these can be created by short depth circuit without preserving the symmetry. Then this sort of fit within our framework. And so this these states can be uniquely determined by their k-local margin, according to our results. And then it seems UDA is an interesting property of short range entangled state. Yeah, so this brings me to the end of conclusion. So I show you this picture and uh, of property of ground states and UDA um, and show you the learning marginal output shell circuit allow you to determine the global state. Yeah, and also show you the circuit uh, complexity of the quantum state. So it might be interesting to, to see if we can get more out of these intrinsic topological states, uh, also including the measurement. So that's my summary of the talk, but I want to end with a, an announcement. We have a faculty search, so maybe I use this uh, opportunity because it will be watched by people internet and and we have two searches actually why did you have two one is qrs theory another is the more formal theoretical physics so maybe go back to here and i'll stop here and thank you very much for your attention or thanks for those who will be watched uh, when it posted on youtube thank you very much thank you very much very interesting talk, and uh, I wonder if there are any questions. We had some questions already during the talk. The cut time. Um, so here you restrict the set of depths to be what log depths. Yeah, for one, for uh, for. Then no matter which, yeah. which kind, it's always should be no no larger than uh log. Right. Yeah. Um. So how about like um. Uh, order of and like, polynomial depths. That's a big question. We uh, yeah. Like the yeah. like the the polynomial depth of circuit to log. Yeah, no, 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 like it's, uh, if the general question is uh, to 
part of the industry that you like to live for the service. Oh, in it's, general, yeah, to, to, yeah. to live for the service, like, a, be, it will be some, yeah, yeah, it's a, like, in square, right, divided by, like, yeah. Yeah. dollar, something like that. Yeah, I mean, for split for circuit, certainly you can, you can do more because you just follow the uh, stabilizers. Yeah. So, and then you could, yeah, so for stabilizers, okay. you, you, for example, uh, starting point zero, the stabilizer are sigma, sigma z, yeah, yeah. and then you just propagate and just need to learn, yeah. Yeah. That you can say more of that. Yeah. So here we don't limit ourselves to the, the the type of gate, but certainly more progress could be made if you sort of restrict to a smaller set, like paper circuit. Yeah. And I think that also interesting. Um, yeah. But in our paper, we didn't specifically discuss that as much. Yeah. But, and another question is like I. Maybe I missed something, but uh, how will the, the, the sample capacity depend on the the circuit capacity in the, the So, because um, we are learning using poly measurement. Yeah, but you could also discuss in terms of learning with like Clifford and the measure, like in the shadow of the market. Yeah, yeah, I mean, in your, uh, in in your like, result, how will the, like, if you learn the output state of terms uh, with the uh, that's like less than equal to B. Mm -hmm. How will the learning uh, sample complexity depend on B? Yeah, so like this. Yeah, so you can polynomially yeah, learn. And this depend upon, you know, with, this would depend on the K, right? You can distinguish this, yeah. You can see two cases where uh, they're close to be um, short depth D or they are far. Is it, this is what you were thinking or? Uh, uh, the, the, oh, I said, so yeah. the case depends on D. But so yeah, it depends on, but also the learning. We can we can learn, like, if you're only given part in a number and the number of layers or circuit Complexity depends on the geometry. And so we list a few cases. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, thanks. So, uh, Roy, are there any talk, uh, questions online? No. Yes. So, I do, have, yeah. Yeah. Yes. I do have a thought about applying this to like the non billion version of the Torico. This is called a quantum double model. Yeah, no, quantum double model. We yeah. have not. Of course, there's recently a lot of advancement in creating this state was a uh, short depth circuit plus measurement. Yes. So we have not considered that, but we mentioned that might be a extension to see if we can include measurement. So our framework does not include measurement, but it will be interesting. So, so, so maybe that actually is this, this slide. The quantum double model uh, actually is this here. Uh, this is the Tory call. So you can cause grains and basically you reverse the circuit is creating that. Uh, but unfortunately, it requires log n depth, uh, non-local gate. And actually, quantum double model can also be cause grain in, in, in this way, similar way. Yeah, there's a there's a paper by uh, Aguado, first author on this. He has a paper on quantum double model. But more generally, you also like to know the twisted version, not just the uh, on the table, but also the twisted version. Uh, that will be harder. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so in general, this is, this is, we don't get much, yeah. We look at that, but we didn't get anything out of, uh, we didn't get anything useful out of this class of, of state. I think it's the way the call screening is not, maybe if you could improve the way to do the call screening, because they are doing this in one layer, they have a few gates acting on the same qubit. But in our definition, we we sort of restrict ourselves. The gate cannot overlap. If it overlap, we will count as another layer. Mm -hmm. um, for them, it's, it's natural to do this in one layer. But one could probably extend our consideration to have uh, more than one uh, two qubit gate. Like it could be four local gate. And that may be, be able to deal with some of these cases. But it re really require you really need to go to the needy, really detail of how you cross grain and construct uh, optimal optimal 
cost screening. But people are fine with the log and depth. But the constant before that is important. Oh. Yeah, the constant. This is the constant is too too large for us to to say anything useful. Yes. Yeah. Unfortunately, for this case, we didn't we didn't have anything. We come in in our paper, but yeah, we don't get. It. But so that's why we turn to a simpler case is that this SPT space. So I'd like to thank TC again for a very interesting talk. And uh, thank you. Next week is Halloween, and we have Ben Spielman coming from Yale. I hope his talk is not too scary. Good to see you, Dan. Thank you.